confess the magic spell you kiss. This is love, the iron rose. When you kiss me, heaven sighs, and though I close my eyes, I see love and rose. When you press me to your heart, and in a world apart, a world where roses bloom. And when you speak, angels sing from above. Every day, void seems to turn into love song. Give your heart and soul to me, and life will always be love and rose. gentlemen and welcome to the film radio show my name's Stephen Lloyd Jackson I'll be your host for the next two hours this country you gotta make the money then when you get the money you get the power say hello to my little friend every Tuesday night from 12 till 2 in the morning I'm going deep 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 undercover all the gin joints and all the towns and all the world she walks into mine. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. What do you think this is, the army where you shoot them a mile away? You gotta get them close like this, and bada bing, you blow their brains all over your nice side of league suit. The S.O. Jackson Radio Show. On top, Let's paint a picture for the audience. Mr. Bond. James Bond. This is Sparta! Go be the money! Three, two, one. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. I love the smell of my pump in the morning. Frankly, my right dear, I don't give a damn. I have a dream. So make sure you join me and my co-host, Charlie Emerson, every Tuesday night. Each week, we'll be discussing my all-time favorite movies and listening to some great music. The S.O. Jackson Radio Show on ontopfm.net. That's awful. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the S.L. Jackson Radio Show on ontopfm.net. My name is Stephen Lloyd Jackson, and I'll be your host for the next two hours, along with my co-host, Charlie Emsis. How are you, Charlie? I'm great, Steve. How are you? Oh, I'm just feeling really great tonight as well. We're here every Tuesday evening, just after midnight GMT. You know, we're showing some brilliant movies. You know, people are asking me all the time, you know, they haven't heard about these movies and I tend to say you know this is really movies from my top 100 movies of all time so I love movies from all genres from all types of actors and directors and anyway we've got a great film here tonight we've got the 1994 32 million dollar movie Leon directed by Luke written and directed by Luc Besson. Essentially, it's one of these movies that when you watch it, you don't want to put it down or you don't want to take your eyes off it. It captivates your soul. It captivates the action man in you. It captivates New York City. It's about an assassin by the name of Leon and he's living and working in New York for an Italian mafia guy who goes by the name of Tony, played by Danny Aiello. 
He can't read. His specialty is cleaning. Weapon. Cleaning. He says cleaning, but weaponry. You know, Leon. Now this movie, it's great. It's as I said, it's 1994. It's actually set in 1994. It's all filmed in New York, and also the interior shots of the um, apartment scenes that was shot in France, I believe. Luc Besson, who's the director, he's a French director. He's born in Paris, France. He was actually going to be a scuba diver. He mm-hmm. Liked, marine biology or something. That's right, he likes water. He's been married a couple of times. What inspired this movie by Luc Besson is a relationship he had at the time when he was about 40 with a young woman. This is what inspired this film. But Luc Besson made some great movies. He's made movies such as The Fifth Element. He actually does the Transporter franchise with Jason Stratham and The Big Blue Taxi and a revolver Nikita. with Nikita Nikita of course Nikita also was yeah. female he was, he was assassin in. also um, I believe is part of the Taken franchise yeah. as well yeah. to date that is the biggest gross in French movie ever in history yeah. so hats off to Luc Bissell we're dealing with a major player yeah. today he's, you know, a, he's uh, a major writer and producer of these action films yes and director as well Yeah, you know those films that we just mentioned these are serious action films yeah. I mean I mean, I wouldn't say they were the best action yeah. film, but they're very in- yeah. entertaining. It's very entertaining. He writes them and produces them and hands them over to his protégés to direct. He's yeah. A few of them, they worked with him, they edited for him, they shot as a DOP for his films, and he gives them these films to direct, like Taken, Transporter, uh, other films, action films like that. Yeah, My friend yeah. is a big fan of him. He's probably watched all his films. Yeah, I've probably seen all his films. I mean, I love French movies. Um, it, once upon a time, they used to just do these kind of love films, rom-com films. Yeah. But I don't know why I'm putting on a silly French accent. But now um, they do some serious, serious action. We've seen films like Le Hain come out of France. Yeah. and um, mm-hmm. Many films. Yeah, yeah. Some really serious movies coming out of France. And, and you know, they, I really like them, you know. And I like the city in terms of it. When you go there, you know, that vibrancy and everything like that. Anyway, let's get the ball rolling. Before we go any further, and um, for those of you who haven't seen this movie and you do not wish to know what's going to happen in the movie, cork, cork your ears. ears. <laughs> okay, okay. Leon, the 1994 32 million dollar movie. What a film it is. I would say it opens up with this panoramic view of Manhattan. We see the sea first, Hudson it, River or something. Isn't it, isn't it the lake in yeah, we cross Central over to, Park? It's the reservoir in Central Park. Yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure if that's Central Park there because I don't believe it's that big. It is. Is it that I've big? I've walked through it. How many years did that take you to walk through it? It took me, actually, I walked through half of it. It took yeah. me four Okay, so hours. anyway, we see this panoramic view of New York. The credits are going. We see, like, New York City in all its splendor and yeah. magnitude. And and, the World Trade yeah. Center. Yeah. And, and Chinatown, um, Little Italy. Little Italy. They're, Italy, they're in a truck. Chinatown. Camera truck. And they're, so uh, they're, they're, camera just, they're just shooting, shooting around, the like, you know, they shine. And then after we zoom up on Supreme Mariconi, it's a cafe stroke restaurant and it's owned by Daniello's character Tony. I first laid eyes on Daniello when he was in um, Spike Lee's movie uh, Do the Right Thing. Mm -hmm, Um, A movie we're definitely going to be featuring on our show in the future and he owned this pizza joint so I was kind of laughing a bit when I saw him with this. Anyway, so we zoom in on his cafe and um, we've got some really tight close-up shots of him. He's discussing with Leon, played by Jean Reno, a job that Leon needs to take care of. Allora, come stai, Leone? Bene. Leon is just drinking a glass of milk and um, he's got these dark circular sunglasses on. And um, they're discussing a man that came into New York and he's in the drug business and he seems to be like stepping on someone's territory, so to speak. So there's a black and white picture of him on the table. Leon has been given instructions to um, show him the door, basically. Kick him out of the city. We introduced the visual style of the film. It's shot in New York. 
York. It's yeah. got this European style. Yeah, but technically, it is a French movie. You know, it's French money behind it, and it's a French production company. They usually say what the movie is is where the money come from. Uh-huh. Anyway, so we're in the hotel and we see a bunch of guys. They walking in. We nice see the big uh, overweight guy with a uh, bunch of cocaine. He wants to sell in New York in someone else's territory. This yeah. is the guy Jean Reno's character has to kill. Let's paint the picture for the audience. That it's a wholesale deal. In other words, he's not going to go out on the street and start peddling it. He's at an hotel yeah, to um, do a deal yeah, with another player, and it kind of like the food chain. You know, you got the farm, yeah. you got the big distributors. Then it goes down to the little shop and until it goes down to the boy selling sweets from his pocket. But he's going to do a deal with some cocaine. It's a few kilos of cocaine. Yeah. He's surrounded by his um, bodyguards to do this deal. So while he's there, he's just staying at the hotel. He's got this young prostitute with him. That's Luc Besson's um, wife. That's right, yes. My when. The Uh, young wife. I don't know, he married five times. Yeah, yeah. That was the woman who actually inspired this movie and the Mm. relationship with the young Natalie Portman and Gene Reynolds' character, Leon. But we'll come on to that in a second. He's doing a business deal, you know. He's in New York, he's stepping on someone's territory, gets a call, he's just about to settle in and do his thing with the young prostitute. He gets a radio call from one of his goons downstairs. and he, In the gun, lobby? Yeah, there's a gun pointed to his head. Talk and he says, listen, there's someone who's very serious about you. There's a guy who wants to talk to you. What's he look like? Serious. You know, and then after that, that henchmen coming. get blown away. You just up. see the blood splatter and, and the walkie-talkie crashes to the floor. The big guy, the big drug dealer, he alerts all these guys, all these other henchmen. There's about eight of them all. And he says, someone serious is about to come up here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Somebody's coming up. Somebody's serious. And then the elevator opens. That's right. They're all standing outside the elevator. The drug dealers, um, goons, they're all standing outside. They've got all their guns trained on the elevator door. So as it opens, they just open fire, blow away their guy. He's already dead. He's hanging from a noose. So this kind of starts off the action for the movie. Yeah, you know, great. from from this scene, you know you're in for a good ride. Yeah. So slowly and slowly, Leon picks off one by one each of these henchmen. You know, there's a guy who's leaning over some rails. They're about, I would say, 50 floors up, and he's leaning over um, some railings, uh, looking down. He's wearing a tire. I don't know why, but um, that's flopping down, and Leon yanks that tire and just drops him to the floor. And in the meantime, we got our big guy, and he is a big guy. He's packing away his money. You know, he's, he's just hey, piling this money on? into his jacket, no and he's saying to the girl, yeah, yeah everything's all right. We just got to get out of it. And she's just in the bed. So that's quite funny. Uh, and the guy gets hanged as well. And this big guy, he does a great job here, acting really scared. He's pro- scared for his life. He's running around the apartment trying to find this guy holding a Uzi machine gun. The big guy, actually, he's actually credited as Fat Man. Not being rude or anything, but that's his actual credit on IMDb, Fat Man, and that's played by Frank Selga. So all these men are being picked off slowly. They're either being shot by Leon. You know, they're being picked off. So he's the last one left. He's got an Uzi in his hand. He thought he saw Leon sprayed the apartment with bullets. And after he went at the back and he's got himself another two Uzis from the arsenal of weapons that these guys are carrying. And he's in a panic. He's kind of just like wandering around the flat with these guns. He tried to open up a door to get out. The handle breaks off the door. He picks up the phone. This is the picture. He's got a phone in one hand and he's got an Uzi in the other hand. And, and, and who is he calling? The police. He's calling the police. He's mad. And, and there is some kind of comedy element to this because we got a big guy. He's got a big gun in his hand and he's got a phone. And he's kind of like saying, Mum, help me. You know, all these guys around him. Desperate though. They're dead. He's yeah, got all yeah. these drugs in there, but he's still going to call the cops. This is it. You know, he's life. looking at five life sentences just for having that amount of drugs in there. Somebody's he's on the phone me. to the cops right. and um, the operator line. picks up his email and he says, 911, can Sir, we help you? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm being attacked or some guys are after me. And the officer on the other end of the phone, he says, OK, what's your name? What's your address? And he's got the phone there and he's backing up as he's talking into this kind of dark um, segment of the apartment. And from this dark segment, we've got Leon his character emerges with this knife 
and he places a knife on the fat man's throat. The fat man says to the copper, the official on the other end of the phone, it's okay, I'll call you back. (laughs) And then we've got the young prostitute, Luc Besson's wife. She says, I'll see you another time. And she kind of like scatters herself at the apartment, off dress. So um, Leon, he reads in the right act. He says, there's some people here who want you out of town, basically. He's already instructed him to ring this number that's on a piece of paper. So it's a client. It's Leon's client. Remember, Leon is an assassin. He's a cleaner. In the industry, they call these people cleaners. His client's on the other end of the phone now, and he instructs Leon, don't kill him, just show him that he's not to come back into our jurisdiction and try and take over business. Yes. Make sure he understands and let him go. Do you understand? So say it. Uh, I understand. Good. This is very kind of pivotal to the to the film. The Very guy nice offers Leon vast yeah, amounts of money if he lets him go. Okay. You know, he says there's like a right, two million chance. or something on the table, it's yours. Leon doesn't blink an eyelid because these guys, they know that I if they start never. double-crossing their clients, they ain't going to last long in the business. So he, he ignores that. When Leon's on the subway on the metro going home and uh, he goes into a store, puts some milk in his bag and he goes up to his apartment. So, OK, so this is the S.O. Jackson radio show this is on top fm.net and remember if you want to hook us up you could hook us up on our twitter page at slj radio show or you could hook us up on the on top fm twitter page as well or on top fm.net website also you could get this show on your mobile you could get the app from TuneIn uh radio again we, we've got a different lineup for the music instead of we doing music from the era of when the film was made or when it was released we're gonna ignore that tonight we've got 100 jazz music for you so we'll see you after these couple of tracks <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's be real. To the SL Jackson radio show. This is on topfm.net. And a couple tracks you've just heard. Uh, the first one being by Sony Stiff, and that's Body and Soul. And the other one being by Art Blakey Quintet, and that's Blues. We're talking about Leon, the 1994 $32 million movie. It's starring Gene Reno, Gary Oldman, Natalie Portman. Hats off to all, all those names I just mentioned, especially the young Natalie Portman. She done a great job in this. So, Charlie, yeah. what have we seen? seen so far well, we've seen a, an assassin a hitman called leon played by jean renault we are introduced to his life and how efficient he is at his job he takes out um, a gang of sophisticated drug dealers that have just come into new york takes them out for a client in a very calculating and efficient way we're watching him as he goes up to his apartment from a store where he buys a couple of cartons of milk he seems to like milk and this job was uh, administered to him by danny Ayeyo's character who seems to be his boss his agent he is his boss he plays tony he runs a cafe or a restaurant in little italy and um it's a family business but the 
behind the smoky family facade he, he runs this outfit oh. where um, yeah. he has clients if they want anybody assassinated bumped off so to speak he hires Gene Reno's character Leo and so he's walking up the stairs now to his flat it's a very Parisian looking flat in Manhattan at the time in Manhattan the rent must have been cheaper than it is now. Yeah, a lot cheaper I would imagine yeah, yeah so they, they're yeah. in Manhattan they're not in Brooklyn or anything yeah and we see the shot going down from the top of the stairs and a couple of small legs wearing colourful colourful p- like pants p- poochy tights multicolour yeah. tights and she's wearing shorts she's got her hair cut in a bob yeah. and we're talking about Natalie Portman yeah. she plays um, the in, character of, Matilda in her debut film role and uh, she's metaphorically behind bars of the Red banisters banisters yeah Comes across, she's smoking a cigarette obviously That's She's not really inhaling it. Well, funny you should say that. One of the conditions of her contract, her mother said to um, Luke Besson, the director, she could only be seen with the cigarette no more than five times. She must never be seen actually inhaling or exhaling the smoke. And during the course of the film, it must be known in the film that she's given up smoking. So her mother, and rightfully so, she was very, very protective over a young baby in this film movie yeah and she's uh comes across jean reno he's just finished that job killing all those guys and he's uh going to his apartment they have a slight interchange they obviously know each other yeah they have they have somewhat of a conversation um they probably bumped into each other along the staircase she seems quite mischievous yeah. but at the same time isolated and a lone child um people got the expression in england billy no mate so she seemed like that kind kind of child who spends a lot of time on her own and daydreaming and fantasizing and stuff like what this yeah. anyway leon enters his apartment oh, before having a few words about don't tell her dad that she's smoking and stuff like that hey don't tell my dad about the cigarette okay and I think she's kind of fascinated or I should say she's got a crush on this older guy Leon character she finds him intriguing I should say so he goes into his apartment we see some men come out of the little girl's apartment there's a conversation with three guys there it's her dad who's played by Michael Badalucco yeah do you, do you know him in anything I've never uh, seen him in a, anything else he did um, a couple of Coen Brothers movies he's known for that okay two and that's her dad so he's a bit of a dweeb like a bad guy almost he's kind of washed up unhealthy looking rough around the edges yeah. and also Gary Oldman's with them he's a detective or lieutenant Stansfield and he runs um, a unit of cops I, I think they work in narcotics He's corrupt. Very corrupt, to say the least, you know. <laughs> Try and follow me, all right? In June, we gave you the dope. It tests 100% pure. Now it's July. We pick up the dope, and it tests 90% pure. Now somewhere between June and July... 10% turn the cut. I don't know. It transpires I that um, he's given Matilda's father some drugs, some uncut, pure drugs, you know, about two kilos or a kilo. Apparently, the drugs have been tampered with. He's probably pinched some out for himself, and they're upset about it. So he's been given a stern warning that they're going to come back the following day, tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and they want to see all the drugs there. If not, there will be problems. Just do me a favor. Find out who did. By tomorrow, noon. One of those guys, Benny, is played by a guy called Keith A. Glasgow. And Benny is Gary Oldman's bodyguard. And he quit acting and became a fireman and he died on 9-11. Yeah. As a, in the World Trade Center when it collapsed. Yeah. He's also a cop as well in the movie. So yeah. they're, they're all kind of cops. They kind of shadow Gary Oldman's character, Inspector Stansfield or yeah. Lieutenant Stansfield. He's quite a high up cop. These guys, they're very dangerous in this movie. After the cops have gone, Matilda's father walks up to Matilda. She's still sitting there uh, with her legs between the banisters, just hanging off it, looking into space. And he says, you know, have you done your work? She says she's done it. He tells her to stop smoking. He slaps her. He tells her to go and clean up the apartment. He seems really kind of deflated and, you know, he doesn't really know what to do. He shouts down at the two cops that he hasn't got the drugs and he don't know what's happening. We go into Leon's apartment. He witnesses 
noticed all that was going on. He was looking through his peephole, the door peephole. So he's kind of aware of what's going on, but he feels, you know, it's none of his business. He's keeping out of it. And we just see him kind of um, get ready for the evening, knuckled down in his apartment. He takes off his coat. He's got this kind of strange, bizarre ulster. It's kind of yeah. almost made of leather, embroidered. And yeah, he's rigged with weapons and, gr and grenades. He's got grenades, you know, wrapped around him. He's got like two hand guns and cleaning his plants. He yeah. cleans his plant. Throughout this film, that's another motif that the main characters, Leon and Matilda, they share the life with this plant. So he just cleans it and he knuckles down for the night. Then after the lights go down and we come to a cut. We're going to see two introverts come together in this movie. And, and I can only say that an explosion is going to be the aftermath of their relationship. And I mean that literally. <laughs> what we've got here, it's the next morning. We're in Matilda, the little 12-year-old girl's apartment. She's with her sister. Her sister's just giving her a good beating because she, <laughs> she's doing her exercise. Matilda, she runs in the room. She switches over the channel. And she loves her cartoons Matilda did. she switches over yeah, the channel her sister run, her twerking sister runs after her gives her a good hiding and then the phone rings um, it's her school it's Matilda's school she pretends to be her mother and she Hello. says uh, Matilda's ill or dead or something is Mr. or Mrs. Lando home? yes this is she Mrs. Lando, when your husband enrolled Matilda at Spencer, he told us she had problems. Now, Matilda left school without permission nearly two weeks ago. She's dead. Basically, we also see a father in the bathroom. He's just woken up. He's with his, his wife. Uh, it's not Matilda's uh, um, biological mother. She probably has something to do with the sex industry. I, I can only imagine, you know. They start to make out in the morning as well in the bathroom and the kids are fighting. They interrupt them. Matilda's got another little brother as well. So it's kind of like a chaotic morning. Then we see Leon. He makes his way down to the local cinema and he's watching a Gene Kelly movie and he seems really happy the cinema is empty remember that um gary oldman's character uh detective stansfield said he's coming back at 12 o'clock for his drugs from matilda's father so john renault comes back home and he sees matilda by the banisters again she has a nosebleed and he gives her a tissue it's more like someone's giving her a punch yeah as he walks off she kind of swings onto the banister and as i said she the little girl's got a crush on this guy you know she asks him if he wants anything down the shop that she's going down the shop if she could get him anything he turns around and he says you know yeah uh, milk i think yeah he asks her to get she's him happy some to milk. get him something and she's happy you know she's she's happy to do that and after she leaves the building we see these guys come up there's about three or four of them they enter the hallway and they stand adjacent to matilda's door we see this particular one his name is blood he's this um white guy who's a dread you know he's got dreadlocks in his hair he's kind of hippie-ish i think they're all cops they're all cops they do a lot of undercover work and then we see gary oldman's character a pair he takes uh, this silver box from his inside pocket. He opens it. There's some green and yellow capsules in this silvery box. He takes one and the camera does a panoramic shot when it, he just arches back and looks up. He cracks you. You can actually hear the capsule crack in his mouth. And after he starts to play some <sighs> Beethoven music in his headset. I like these calm little moments before the storm. It reminds me of Beethoven. What the director does is bring up the sound of the music and he's like swinging and swaying. He's got real high. Leon's character, he's looking through his people. So he's witnessing everything in the hallway. Gary Oldman's character take a pump action shotgun from one of his guys. He shoots the door. He shoots the lock of uh, Matilda's apartment door. He enters the flat and he just go ape wild with the gun. He shoots the mother. She's having a bubble bath. Matilda's sister, she starts to run crazy, screaming in the apartment, and he shoots her in the back. And this, I want to stress, it's a French film. You know, they don't mess about when they do stuff like this. You know, it's not done pretty. Remember, Matilda 
Matilda's out at the shop. She's getting some milk. Then after, he approaches Matilda's father and he said, it's 12 o'clock. He says, sorry, my fault. It's two minutes to 12. We're a bit early. He's a very kind of condescending, supercilious character, this Gary Oldman. But he plays it very well to a T. No. So he tells the rest of his guys to search the flat for the drugs, for money. And these guys are starting to tear up the flat. People's obviously heard gun sounds and this and that. I assume that Gary Oldman's character, he's got a lot of clout in the department. So he must have said, listen, there's going to be arresting this major drug dealer. We've got a unit there. So he must have kind of cordoned off the area with his other police units. (laughs) I like this bit where Blood, the white dread Rasta guy, he's looking at uh, the collection of albums. He picks up this burning spear one, which is called Marcus's Children. Anyway, Matilda's little brother is cowering under the bed now. He's hiding. At that moment, one of the detectives, they get this big um, Swiss knife, like, and he and he starts to stab in the mattress, and the knife blade is just missing this little young boy. The father pulls out a gun and he shoots one of the detectives, and the little boy scarpers from under the bed. Blood, the white dread, gets out his machine gun and just starts to let loose with it. Hells of bullets just flies all over the apartment we see the little boy running he's obviously shot they don't show it thank god so he's dead the father of the family he's also shot by gary oldman now gary oldman is really peed off because he took a grazing of a bullet through his nice new suit so he claims he gets out his revolver and the father is shot but he's not dead he's crawling along the floor gary oldman's character stansfield he shoots him in the back about four Four, five, six times. So these are the kind of characters that we're dealing with. His colleague kind of takes him out of the apartment. You know, just want to cool him down, have a cigarette. We got Gary Oldman in the hallway now. Leon, he's still in his apartment and looking at the hallway through his people. This old woman emerges from her apartment. And what Luke Besson does, he's probably a sick guy, got a sick humour, just like me. So she comes out the apartment. She says, why can't you leave that? family alone why don't you leave that poor family alone stuff right everything's all right just calm down i am calm i'm calm why don't you leave them alone and um, Gary Oldman kind of looks at her and he points the gun at her and he shoots the gun. He shoots this glass panel from behind. Poor thing. Matilda now, she comes back with a load of groceries. She walks into the hallway. We've got one of the rogue detectives standing outside the door. These are all plain clothes detectives, remember? She's walking up to the doorway. Her better senses tell her she's not going to go into her apartment. She carries on walking. One of the rogue cops eyeing her as if to say oh i wonder who she is so she walks up to leon's apartment and she knocks on the door leon is very apprehensive to answer this door because he doesn't want to get involved in this he's a guy of solitude you know although he kills for his living and that lot he just wants to live a peaceful humble life after a day's killing takes pity on her he opens the door and he lets her in yeah, it's really tense so you get this guy outside gets notified that there's a girl missing and he realizes that it could be the girl that just walked past he lets it go and john renault has to deal with this new influence in his life this is on top fm.net this is the so jackson radio show we're gonna play a couple of great tracks and we'll see you on the other side of this <laughs> You will not be able to stay home, brother. On top, in the house. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. 
revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on report from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on the rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still life of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on search for tomorrow because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry R. Woman Liberationist and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Keyes, nor sung by Glenn Campbell, Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humperdinck, or The Rare Earth. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live. Let's be real. Begin. Begin. This is anti-auto-tune. Death of the ringtone. This ain't for iTunes. This ain't for sing-alongs. This is Sinatra at the opera. Bring a blonde. Preferably with a fat ass who can sing a song. Wrong. This ain't politically correct. Uh, this might offend my political connects. Uh, my raps don't have melodies. It should make jackets want go and commit felonies. Uh, Chain took in. I may do it myself, I'm so Brooklyn I know we facing a recession But the music y'all making gon' make it the Great Depression Or your lack of aggression Put your skirt back down, throw a set, man Yeah, this just violent This is death for auto-tune, moment of silence To rewrite history without a pen No ID on the track, let the story begin Begin, begin, hold on This ain't a number one record uh, This is practically assault with a deadly weapon uh, I made this just for flex and Mr. C, I want people to feel threatened uh, Stop your blood clot crying The kid, the dog, everybody dying, no lying Boys, jeans too tight, your colors too bright, your voice too light. Too uh, hard, uh, I might wear black for years straight. Uh, I might bring back Versace shades. Uh, this ain't for Z100. Ye told me to kill y'all to keep it 100. Uh, this is for Hot 97. For Khaled, for we the best in. Uh, yeah, this just violent. This is death for auto tune, moment of silence. Rapper to rewrite history without a pen No ID on the track, let the story begin Begin, begin, hold up This might need a verse from Cheesy hey. I might send this to the mixtape, Weezy Get somebody from BMF to talk on this Get this to a blood, let a crit walk on it uh, Get me thou to style on this I just don't need nobody to smile on this uh, You rappers singing too much Get back to rap, you teeth painting too much uh, uh, I'm a multi-millionaire So how is it? I'm still the hardest to hear uh, I don't be in the project hallway Talking about how I be in the project all day uh, That sounds stupid to me If you a gangster, this is how you prove it to me uh, uh, Yeah, just get violent Death for auto-tune, moment of silence. Oh,
top in the house. And welcome back to the SO Jackson Radio Show. This is on top fm.net. A couple of superb jazz tracks you just heard. The first one from Gil Scott Heron, and that was called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. You say it. And the other one was by Jay Z. I had to slip a Jay Z in, you know, any opportunity. And that was dead on arrival we're going on with the 1994 32 million dollar film leon it's about this hitman and he's in america he's working for a mafiosa named tony played by danny aalo basically does jobs for danny's character to gives him the target from the clients he hits them he gets paid i think it's like five grand a hit but what we got now he just witnessed this family in an apartment apartment block where he lives you just witnessed them being wiped out by this corrupt detective played by gary oldman his name is stansfield and his mob of detectives they left the witness behind and the witness is matilda played by natalie portman she's 12 years old in the movie she seeked sanctuary in leon's apartment while all this was going on so she her family's been wiped out her stepbrother her stepsister her stepmother and her father they're all dead gary oldman's character uh, realizes does he realize yet he doesn't realize yet that there's one family member yeah. that's missing his cronies do but they, he doesn't really care yeah he, uh-uh. he's not bothered at that moment we're gonna more focus on the relationship with leon and matilda played by natalie portman What's so that? she's very upset at the moment she's in his apartment she's saying you know they killed her family yeah, she, she doesn't care about all her family just her brother just her brother yeah he's so hesitant to so accept her in his life in that his that apartment he's thinking what he can do he wants to help her a little bit but then just get rid of her she. because she might she's disrupt his routine she needs him I think they're talking in the apartment he's giving her some milk some biscuits you know some food and they're just wondering how they're going to clear this situation up he gets up to do something she noses around the table he's he carries this briefcase box like around with him all the time it's got all his armory in weapons it's got about four five handguns grenades and stuff like that she opens it she's really kind of taken aback but I think she she kind of had a suspicion that he was in something dodgy and she asked him um, are you a hitman and he says I'm a cleaner Leanne what exactly do you do for a living cleaner you mean you're a hitman yeah cool and he tries to cheer her up with this pig story and it's really cute I like the way the camera zooms in on her as she's realised this guy is trying to cheer her up. He's got this, like, it's like a hoven glove. It's kind of like a puppet kind of thing. And he got a character drawn on it of a pig. And he's pretending to be the character and talking to her as that pig character. Natalie Portman, I must say, a great actress she is. What I get from this is that she's saying, you're just like me. Your humour is just like mine. And she seems mesmerized by what he just done literally mesmerized yeah. uh, you could see it in the eyes from there on i think that's where things start to take off in her mind and it slowly start to um translate into her uh, actions with him yeah she wants to be like him she wants to be a kit man he's yeah. starting to like her company well what? she says something and it makes him feel something he probably hasn't felt in a long time yeah well what would transpire later on in the story is that when he first met his mafioso boss tony tony discovered him and, and it's going to come out later on in the story that he was wet behind the ears wet behind the collar he was a young lad and he had a broken heart so he just broken up from his dead girlfriend and i think what luke bessel does here this girl is a younger younger version of the woman that he was once in love with that's yeah. that's what back, i imagine back home yeah remember there's two versions of this film there's the theatrical cut original cut and an extended cut and the extended cut just has uh, extra scenes between these two characters talking more in depth and, and um, um, you know their relationship it's, yeah. it takes a bit of a different turn than it does in the original yeah that's right but I think it, Luc Besson prefers the original than to, to the extended uh, as I said earlier the French they seem to be more open with dealing with love stories and um, it is a love story actually yeah. but not in the normal love story way because he's a big grown man and she's a child basically she's a young girl 
they had to come really close to this line yeah. and our loop besson done it is skillfully done without it going into a kind of different type of movie if you see what i mean without it going into a, a specialist movie yeah <laughs> if, if you see what i mean it skirts the line between him being a father and him being sort of a lover with her yeah so later he puts her to bed she's sleeping in the, in his bed and he's just sitting out in a living room area and he's thinking, he, he, he's he, contemplating. That's how he sleeps. He sleeps on the couch, always ready. So he sits up on the couch. Yeah. And he picks up a gun, he rushes towards her, and he contemplates whether he wants to shoot her. He's in going the head. to murder her. He, he attaches a silencer to the gun. He marches up to her, he points the gun at her head, and after he just, he doesn't do it. Of course he can do it, he's killed lots of people before, but one of the mottos in his film, he says, no women, no children. And I believe he was going to shoot her, one, because of the hassle that all this could bring on him. For we know he's an illegal alien in America, in the United yeah. States. So he doesn't want no heat around him. And the other reason as well, I do think he finds her quite endearing. She reminds him, of his older girlfriend so there's a lot of mixed emotions so in any case he doesn't carry it out and the next day she just lets him know I want to be like you I've decided what to do with my life I want to be a cleaner I want to be a cleaner go clean but not with me I work alone and stand alone Bonnie and Clyde didn't work alone Thelma and Louise didn't work alone. He obviously best. thinks she's too young. She's very provocative in this movie. She likes yeah, annoying him story. almost. Uh, this movie, I believe it was made a year before um, Heat, where she played a right young girl the in Heat. Right. Yeah. She was and a stepdaughter of Al Pacino's character. I wouldn't say they were the same girls, Louise. but they both got this temperament, Throw this kind of wild temperament. Yeah. All these girls kind of got the same American young spoiled temperament. Yeah. See what I mean? I yeah. do. And uh, she takes his gun, she fires it out the window. To prove that she can handle the weapon. <laughs> That's right, it's a revolver. She points it down slightly, she fires it. You hear a couple of cars screeching their tires, you know. So the next shot is of. Is of a street looking down a long lens of a uh, avenue in New York. You see Jean Renault just walking, comes up over this gradient in the road and then you see beside him Natalie Portman and obviously he's taking her in now and they have to move apartment because of what she just did I think so they go find another hotel to stay in and he tells her you know I don't want you to do this I don't and she says okay to everything okay okay and he sure says that. stop saying okay yeah. she says okay don't you ever do that again or break your head you got that okay it don't work like that it's not professional there is rules. Okay. And stop saying okay all the time, okay? Okay. <laughs> It actually reminds me, a very quick story, when I was at school, um, you had this French teacher who was really strict and he said to one of the guys in our class who was a joker, he says, I don't want to hear another peep from you again. And the young boy said, peep. And the French <laughs> teacher gave him one box. It was allowed back in our day, you know, teachers were crazy. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. <laughs> They're booking into another hotel now, she's and um, she's she's like the talker. She's like the intelligent one, yeah. right? So she she hustles this uh, receptionist to get them a room. She pretends she's a musician from Juilliard. Jean Reno realizes that she he could use her. That like she's got her uses because the hotel receptionist doesn't want violins. And obviously they're hiding guns, and there's a violin case. That yeah, and uh, he thinks they're gonna make too much noise. She gets them out of this issue. And he can't read all right in the movie. He can't read all right yeah. so uh matilda up, she please. says oh i'll fill this in daddy that's the form yeah she likes oh, doing it uh filling the hotel form so she, she fills it in you know and um the first thing um gene reno's character do is when he gets in the hotel room he looks around he scours it for escape routes the usual stuff because he looks around so he's telling the audience that, the that later on in the film when he does certain actions it's believable basically yeah john
John Renault's character True. is meeting up with Danny Ayo's character you in the restaurant. To totally. Jamie, they showed them in discussion, like, and this is where own it own comes own. out how That's them two myself, got to meet pro. each other. And no Danny's no character no basically no saying, I'm, I no first no remember when you first sure. came to America, you, you know, you were still wet Always behind the ears and you were, you had your broken heart in love. And the audience is going to say, well, how did he kind of get with this Italian American mafioso? So, you know, you can imagine like he was probably Jane, Jane, about a teenager when he yeah. came mm -hmm. to New York. John Renault asked him for a request. Danny yeah. Ayo says, I can't believe you asked for this request. Yeah. And it ends up being this assault rifle. And that he obviously wants to teach Natalie Portman's character how to fire a weapon. High velocity rifle that, yeah. you know, that snipers, well, mainly snipers, of course, you could use it. you got to know that in America, they sell some crazy weapons as long as you've got a gun permit or whatever to have. They're on top of this building. It's a beautiful shot of the skyline of New York. They're laying down on top of this roof. Yeah, and they're overlooking Central Park. The rifle is the first weapon you learn how to use because it lets you keep your distance from the client. They've got this um, so telescopic the lens on yeah, the rifle so, so they could the see client. that far, we'd say about a mile or half a mile at least, into Mr. Central Park. And um, this is where Leon is letting uh, Matilda do some practicing. Yeah. Now, it cuts down to the bottom of Central Park or around well, Central second, Park. We have, I can only imagine it's a congressman. Yeah. I mean, this guy, he's going out running. He's got this bright yellow and orange tracksuit on and he's with all his bodyguards, like, protected. He's heavily guarded, you know. He's got about six, seven guys around in there yeah. and they're Watch running. And then after we cut back to uh, Matilda's character, she's looking through the lens of this telescopic lens and she's got her finger on the tree and it's got the cross mark of where she wants to shoot. She's got it trained on this congressman. So this guy's just jogging along. They do it in slow motion. She shoots him, but it hasn't got real bullets in. It's, it's got kind of paintball, what you paintball. use for paintballs. And she shoots him and um, the guy goes down, the congressman goes down. You got all these bodyguards who jumps on top of him and he says, I'm all right, I'm all right, get off me. Yeah, and it's funny. Yeah. They're living together now. She's cleaning his guns yeah cleaning uh, the apartment yeah. shopping groceries yeah it's and a the, montage basically and the plant he puts a plant out on the window they're doing exercise together so he's kind of training her his protege he's training her to become an assassin he's giving her milk all the time he's telling her it's good for your bones they got this thing they got a hard on for milk i think it's about it mean signifies innocence yeah, and he goes to sleep, he turns out the light, he sleeps in his chair with his gun beside him the mm. next morning. So we go for all these montages. This is the SL Jackson radio show on topfm.net. We're gonna have a break and we'll see you on the other side of this. Montage in the house. My baby don't care for shows. My heart don't care for shows. My baby don't care for shows.
care for shows And he don't even care for clothes He cares for me My baby don't care For cars and races Baby don't care for He don't care for high tone places Liz Taylor is not the style And even Liberace smiles Something he can't see Something he can't see I wonder what's wrong With baby My baby just cares for My baby just cares for My baby just cares For me Let's be real Taking me higher And I'm falling down under your spell Oh, you're holding me tight in your arms Got me reeling from your tender charms Oh, I'm on fire And I'm feeling things I'll never tell So Jackson Radio Show. This is on top of fem.net going out all over the world. A couple of tracks you just heard there by two beautiful women, gorgeous singers. The first one being from Nina Simone, Can Only Be My Baby Just Cares For Me. And the next one is a track, I love this track to death, that was by Jean Khan and it's called Closer Than Close. Okay, so we're doing the 1994 Leon movie, also known as Leon the Professional, I believe, is it? Yeah, that's yeah. his official title. 32 million bucks. What do you think of the budget on this, Charlie? Uh, 
<laughs> uh, it's a uh, high budget. I think it's for all the shootouts and explosions and squibs and for the actors. But, uh, yeah, what, what's Gary that? Oldman was pretty big. Yeah, Gary Oldman is, yeah. Yeah, I like about it is this, they seem to have a lot of European actors in this film and they give mm. them an American accent. That's right, and that's it adds right. a unique twist. That's to the, right. To the aesthetics of the film. So for those of you who just joined us, uh, the film's called Leon. It's about a hitman. He works for a mafioso boss called Tony, played by Danny Aiello. He's witnessed the slaying of a family in his previous apartment block by a bunch of corrupt cops led by Gary Oldman. He plays a guy called Stansfield. They slay the old family away from one member, Matilda, 12-year-old girl. Leon's taking her in, and this girl's played by Natalie Portman. Uh, it transpires she wants to be a hit woman, so to speak. So Leon's training her up, and they're having, like, a plutonic relationship. Like father, like daughter. Like father, like daughter relationship. But I believe she may have this little crush on him. And... Yeah, but she's, she's young. She doesn't yeah. know what she's feeling. Yeah, yeah, she does doesn't really know her emotions all over the place she's teaching him how to read and write and so things are going quite well at the moment they're getting to know each other yeah what can i say about uh leon played by gene reno he's actually born in casablanca morocco he's of um spanish parents um, he studied acting, TV, theatre, film. He's actually been divorced twice. He's got a couple of kids. He's came in quite a few movies. Um, da Vinci Code. Ronin. Ronin, which is a great film, that is, which we're going to be doing on our show. And um, he, he's a very decent actor. Natalie Portman, she's actually... She was born in 1981. She was actually born as Natalie Hirschleg. And she's <laughs> from Jerusalem in Israel. Lady. Study at Harvard. Uh, she met her husband on Swan Black Swan that movie which I can't wait to do as well it's a crazy movie love that she actually won an Academy Award for that and um, she's been in another bunch of movies as well Heat, Heat and V for Vendetta Star Wars uh, Cold Mountain Zoolander Thor she actually was nominated for a film called Close so she's a very very decent actress um, she's probably I would say one of the top in her game at the moment in Hollywood she's very very decent actress yeah. i would say okay let's get on with the movie man let's take this audience for a ride yeah. because this movie's just going to it's going to explode at the end i keep saying that charlie what we got here now and as, as we said they're getting to know each other danny portman's teenage character and uh and jean Reno, and they're playing dress up and guess who i'm dressing up as and she brings out charlie chaplin marilyn monroe and, and he doesn't know, know anybody he knows gene are. kelly because yeah. he's a fan yeah and then he comes out as john wayne and she thinks he's clint eastwood <laughs> that's right yeah so we realize that like, he's cleaning his plant he puts it out to the sun so that he can get its intake of sun yeah. light basically yeah, light. so that's how plants eat yeah and <laughs> they say if you talk to a plant or play music to it it's happier they say if you talk to a plant because plants feed and grow off carbon dioxide oh, so right, technically yeah. they're right <laughs> but it's not really that true oh yeah. yeah it's like he says it's his best friend you love your plant don't you it's my best friend what was happy no questions no, it's like me you see holds yeah. And then she says, If you really love it, you should plant it in the middle of a park so that it can have roots. Yeah. I'm the one who should be watering if you want me to grow. And I think that's a very sexual line. It's got a lot of innuendo in it. I don't want to go too much down that road, but um, like I said before, it's a French movie and uh, French, you know, they're more adventurous where it comes to, you know, certain yeah. mm. film styles. And we see them in the restaurant. We see um, Leon talking to Tony again, the mafioso guy who gives him all his um, jobs to do. And, and um, we realise that he holds his money for him like a bank. That's right. Because he can't handle it himself. Well, he can't makes read, him, he can't write. So. Yeah, it makes him dependent on, on this guy. Yeah. Tony's kind of surprised that he's, he's probably the first yeah. time that he's and, ever uh, asked him about nice money. Job. So he says, is it a woman? Like right. he knows That's right. it, it is a woman. Yeah, he's, he's from old school. He knows like the man's thinking that. about, you know, uh, starting to think about the future now and this and that. You can tell the way Jean Reno says the word money, he says it like, like it's a swear word it's like money and yeah my money 
You need some money? No, just curious. Oh. Of course, I've been working a long time and I haven't done anything with my money. Because it's forbidden almost to talk about it to this guy. Andy Portman's character is outside talking to this guy, to this guy almost her age, and she, he gives her a cigarette to smoke, and John Renault gets really mad at her. He goes, that rushes outside and talks to her. If you remember at the start of the film, I said one of the stipulations yeah, that was in the contract yeah. was yeah. that um, um, Natalie Portman's mother said, you know, yeah, she wanted her to be but seen as giving up deal, smoking, smoking in the movie. Luke Besso, he honored that agreement and he put this bit in. Well, she doesn't give up here, but her mother also said she can only be seen in five scenes. Yeah, five, yeah. And I think this is the second one. Yeah, but they're headed that way, like, because obviously yeah, it won't be realistic if he said give up. She said, yes, OK, you know, it's a drug. It's, yeah, it's, it's she, she's really thing. mischievous. To okay. her, he gets angry at her and she she sort of likes it. Yeah, she likes it because she realised that he's jealous and this is why I kept banging on that she had a crush on him. Okay. She now realises that he's jealous of her having another say. guy talking to her. And this is why the next shot, you yeah. see her on the bed flapping back like this kind of <laughs> contentment <laughs> shot yeah. of her. Like. She says she's in love. <laughs> yeah, she feels it in her stomach. Oh. That's right. And he, he, he snorts his it. He he's just drinking his milk <laughs> and he chokes it up like and you it goes all over his face so he's on his way to do a job so he leaves her uh, in the hotel yeah. nice shot of new york again i think yeah. that's uh um, definitely manhattan that is by that in probably one of the main roads down there and you can see it in her eyes she's looking at him as he walks away that like she really likes him so she's talking to the um concierge or the hotel uh, guy downstairs he just asks her questions like oh what is it that yeah, you and your father do and she says nice. that's not my father and she she turns around to him and she says that's not my father that's my lover what exactly does your father do well, he's a composer oh that's wonderful except he's not really my father he's my lover <laughs> And, and the guy, he's kind of like, he can't believe what he just... And, and he looks at it. I, I like the piece of music that comes with this. He nicked it from a horror film genre yeah. when she says that. Yeah, didn't you see it? It's just like, it's really powerful. She leaves the hotel. She goes back to her apartment where her family was slain. Yeah, it's a crime scene now. There's a cop outside flirting with a girl in the flat. Yeah, so he hey, says you can't go in there. And she just says, no, I live next door. So she does go in there, she goes into the apartment, she snoops around, she looks at a couple of pictures and that lot. Then after she takes up a floorboard, a piece of wooden floorboard, where it's got um, a stash of cash 20, wrapped up yeah. in some polystyrene bag. Yeah, so it's hidden, $20,000. Yeah, she must. She probably spied on her father putting it there one time and she picks up a teddy bear as well. I think it's her little brother's. She holds it affectionately. But anyway, then she's interrupted by Stansfield, you know the detective that was part of that slaying. And he's now. with a couple of internal step affair step cops. Exactly. Every time, obviously, when someone's been shot he by the cops gone. or injured or Man, bad accident, uh, you know, it's just procedure that they investigate, it, make sure the cops were not we're at exactly fault or to blame or any corrupt stuff happening. Yeah, I assume, I assume this is like a week or a week and a half after it happened uh, that the internal affairs investigated. Because there was quite a lot of time in terms of film length that passed from that moment to the moment now. Uh, Guy Eldman's angry, he doesn't want to answer these questions. He doesn't have to answer to anyone. And he runs out, he, he steals a person's basketball. You've ball. got some guys, some kids playing basketball and he just takes the yeah, ball from <laughs> his <laughs> And he's hey, my ball, you should be at school. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she, she gets a cab and there's a guy with cornrows driving the cab. And she asks him to follow this guy. Stan asks him to follow Stan no. Yeah, and he's like, I can't drive around all day following people. She gives him a crisp new hundred dollar bill, shows it to him, and she says... And she, she realises that he works at the Department of Justice, DEA, yeah. Drugs Enforcement Agency. So they go to this big building uptown or downtown, downtown. I don't really know. Downtown. And um, she spies on him for a little she, bit. Yeah, but she realises where he works. Yeah. And uh, she, she's home and she likes watching the Transformers cartoons. What's his name? Um, Leon. Yeah. He comes on from work, he puts the key in the door of the hotel room. You can see blood from his hand. So we know that he's been on a mission. He went yeah. out to kill someone. Yeah. 
she was watching a cartoon. Now, I find this interesting because she switches off the cartoon. Yeah. And she wants to kind of act all grown up, waiting for oh, yeah, her know. man to come back. Yeah. But what's funny, what, what Luke Bessel so, done there, and I was literally laughing at this, funny. she tries to act all grown up, but you see all these sugar yeah. puffs and all these Crisps. kids' cereal boxes there. So it was a nice dichotomy. Yeah, and... Uh, and uh, he buys her a pretty yeah, right. pink dress. Yeah, dress. And then they gets a knock on the door and it's the concierge, the receptionist downstairs, who thinks that they're lovers, kicks them out of the hotel. Wow, yeah, but him? take the picture for the audience. He actually comes up with these two um, workers, other workers in the hotel, <laughs> I can assume, because they kind of got the white shirts yeah. on. Yeah. And you see them in the background, like, you know, <laughs> he must have said to them, you know, you guys come with me, there may be a bit of trouble here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they find a new hotel. And yeah. So they're settling in. This is the SL Jackson Radio Show on topfm.net. We're doing the 1994 Leon. Anyway, we're going to hit you up with a couple of tracks here and we're going to come back after this. On top in the house. <laughs>
welcome back to the SL Jackson radio show on topfm.net. A big hello to everybody listening to us, all our frequent listeners, I should say. You know, we've got quite a lot. Yeah, and the tracks you just heard, the first one being from Miles Davis, and that's called So What. I really do love that track. And the other one's by John Coltrane, and that's called Blue Train. If you want to hook us up, our Twitter page is at SLJ Radio Show. Or we've got a Facebook page, just go to SL Jackson Radio Show. And there's also the app, the On Top FM app. You could download it to your phone so you can listen to us on the go. You can listen to a lot of the other great shows. We've got the Breakfast Show in the morning. We've got chat shows. We play all types of music on this station. And it's getting big now. A lot of people are talking about On Top FM. We're talking about the $32 million Leon, yeah. assassin, bad man. Yeah, written and directed by Luc Besson, starring John Renault, Natalie Portman, Gary Oldman and Danny Aiello. Yeah, great cast, I must say. You know, we're past the midway stage of the movie. Things are starting to heat up. John Renault plays a hitman uh, working for Danny Ayo's character and he's, ju- he's just done a job earlier before the break and we see him stitching up a wound in his chest in the shower. He's got injured and realized it's, it's, it was quite an important job and we didn't see it happening. And we didn't see it go on because we were following Natalie Portman's character. Telling that guy, yeah. <laughs> telling the hotel concierge yeah. that Leon was a lover. Yeah. <laughs> so they got thrown out of that hotel. hotel. And now the John show. Renault's character is meeting up with Dania Ayo's character, Leon. Tony, the, the mafioso middleman. And this is where he tells him, if I die, Tony, I want you to give my money to Natalie Portman. Matilda. If s- something happens to me someday... Hey. Leon, nothing's going to happen to you. You're indestructible. Bullets slide off you. You play with them. And and I must say, we haven't spoke much about the music on this movie. I find it, especially at the end of the movie, it's just, it's really touching. I noticed it. I noticed it plays throughout a lot of scenes. There's a lot of music throughout the whole. Yeah. It's good, in a way. Composed by Eric Serra. Uh, No, but there's a lot of these French composers. There there are a lot of them. They get quite famous and they do a lot of movies. Yeah. The old atmosphere of the movie, I don't know. It's it's just great movies to watch. And the story... The stories are great and the colouring, it, it really blends together well. They use the palette well on this. Luke Besson, he does use the palette well on this. Mm-hmm. And this, to me, is one of his, I would say, is his best it is. movie. It is his best. You know, by far. Don't get me wrong, I like Transporters and all that. I don't think he directed that. No, he didn't direct it, but usually, even if a director is involved on, like, producing a movie, it still have remnants of mm. how he would do it if he's, like, if major he producer it, on it and wrote, wrote it, it yeah. and stuff like that. So what we got? We've got Matilda. She followed Stansford character to where he works. This is the crooked cop played by Gary Oldman. Yeah, he killed her family. He, the star slayed, the film. he just slayed the family. Yeah. And um, she followed him back to his building. Built, Department um, of Justice. Uh, DA building. The, so uh, he's some kind of high up cop. You know, he's, he's not no fly by night copper. So she followed him there the previous day. And now she's <clears> pretending <throat> to drop off pizza. Yeah, to, she, to the she building. signs herself in. She goes. She sees that he oh, goes into a, a bathroom. Yeah, he's talking like to Blood. Blood is another one of his cults, and um, he's gone upstairs to the office. And Stansfield's gone into the bedroom, and she's followed him in there. She looks around. She enters the men's toilet. She's carrying this pizza and this bag, which look like ribs or burgers. But yeah. in that bag, she's got guns, like. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know that yet at this moment. Yeah. We know it because we've seen the film before, but don't worry about it. Yeah. But anyway, so she's carrying guns in a bag. She walks right up to the cubicle areas. One of the doors are shut. Uh, she assumes that um, Stansfield is in the toilet doing his thing. So she puts the bag down. I would imagine she's about to take out the guns out of the bag and pop him. But then Stansfield's standing behind the toilet door, the main door to the toilet, and he swings it back closed. And he walks up to her. And uh, he, he knows that she's onto him. He realizes that she's followed him there and he wonders why. Chinese. He takes out another pill and he crushes it into his teeth. And he's acting all crazy uh, again. I think he's wait. high on drugs a lot. Yeah. Medical drugs. Well, they say prescription drugs. People are more addicted to that Italian. than on, on the street drugs. So it doesn't surprise me, you know. Oh. 
So, you know, he's sending him a bit crazy because he knows that he's about to do something crazy. So usually these guys that are into crazy stuff, you know, they usually take a hit before just to numb the humane nerves in their body, which is, you know, if they've got any ounce left of it. The way Luc Besson plays with that now craziness is me. that Everything he gets you know some Stansford, the cop, to get up close and personal in her space and really kind of um, psychologically <laughs> threatening her. And I, and I would say that he's even threatening the audience as well with, you know, is he going to start molesting her or something like that? Yeah. He pulls out the gun and Stansford pulls out his gun. And this is a big kind of revolver. It's a magnum. It looks like a magnum. I can't be 100% sure. But he pulls was like this Shit. big hell of a gun and he's shot from a low angle up Killed big body standing over this little petite girl and yeah. tears just roll out of her eyes and this is the first time where you see her really vulnerable yeah. in the movie because she's she's a tough girl yeah. she's kind of tough you can see she's been through a lot he leans it. down in front of her and i must say the acting is bordering incredible by natalie portman and of it's course gary oldman thing. you know it's when you start to become really afraid of death that you learn to appreciate life do you like life, sweetheart? Yes. He's got these uh, characteristics, like he sniffs a lot yeah. and does all yeah. that. Yeah, and you can see what they've done here. They've cut the fringe. They splice Natalie Portman's fringe here and it's just peering out the hat as if to make pleasure. her look like Frel-like, just yeah. emerging from life. her little cap. And he's got the gun and he's it kind of wiping it on her face, the nozzle of the gun, just wiping it on her face. And then blood walks yeah. into the toilet. Again, yeah. sorry to go it's so much into detail with this, but again, really upstairs. precise wow. acting. He says, can't you see I'm busy? And the way he says that is like he's really enjoying threatening Mom, this little girl. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. happens next? Blood tells him the story of how a lot of our men from the force, corrupt cops, got blasted away by this one hit man in a Chinatown deal. And we see a flashback of all these guys getting blown away. This angers Gary Oldman's character. Obviously, and we see it is Jean Reno doing all this and because he's getting revenge for yeah it's, it's Leon doing this he's taking it upon himself to wipe out this corrupt police fraternity yeah Gary Oldman's character he's still got his gun in his hand and he's kind of waving it like he's pointing it the gun at blood one of his other cohorts he's in shock of the news yeah. You know, because these guys, especially uh, Oldman's character, Stansfield, he think he's an untouchable. You know, they run the drug enforcement agency, you know, they got a top job there, he's got his guys there, they're making money, and they think they're untouchable. And he tells him, let's take her upstairs, because he knows that she wanted to kill him, he wants to find out more why. And he probably thinks the murders, his guys getting murdered and hers, linked, which they are. And so we see John Renault, he's back at the hotel room and she's written him a letter of where she is. That. She's at the DEA building down at the Department of Justice and he follows her there through security, he forces his way through, he goes up to where she is. She's held in like the office is upstairs in Blood's office and he, another one of the cohorts, they're all relaxed, they're kind of poking fun at her like uh, cause they start to empty the pizza bag and Blood especially, he's really rubbing it in. And remember, he's the one that actually took out her little brother. Yeah. And he's saying, like, what's this we got in this, trying to put this pato oh, Jamaican accent, what's this we, we got, got in the bag? Lunch. And he, he takes out this slice of pizza, yeah, and blood. his cohort says, hey, that could be poison. He said, no, it's got no untrue oats on it. Anchovies, yeah. Yeah, untru un no, but why well, we say untrue oats? He doesn't <laughs> even pronounce it properly. Yeah. Careful, blood. Might be poison. No, man, there's no anchovies on this. So then... Leon comes in, points his weapon at the two corrupt cops and blasts them away. Matilda runs up in his arms, she wraps herself around him and hugs him. Then we cut from that. And then we see Danny Ayo's character, Tony, hosting a birthday party for one of his relatives in his restaurant. I think it's his son's birthday. There's all balloons uh, and, and he sees um, Stansfield. Stansfield, Gary Oldman's character comes in. But before that, a couple of his cohorts comes in first. Yeah. They're packing. 
they've got their guns out basically yeah. so Daniolo's he knows something wrong yeah and he says I'm, I've come to you you've done business for us before uh, you're a good guy you're a good guy to work with my guy's got shot in your area and I'm sure you know what's going on he has to tell him basically that yeah. it was Leon that shot your guys yeah well he shows him a picture of his dead colleague and he says um, the China man said it was an Italian guy and so they know it's Leon basically we're going to go for a break now we're going to come back to do the finale so it's going to be explosive see you back after this in the house Still in the 
peaceful dreams I see The road leads back to you I said, Georgia Oh, Georgia No peace I find Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Well, the arms will reach out to me Well, the eyes smile tenderly Still in peaceful dreams I see The road leads back to you Whoa Georgia, no peace, no peace I find, just an old sweet song, keeps Georgia on my mind. Say just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind On top, in the house Okay, and welcome back to the S.O. Jackson Radio Show This is On Top FM.net We're talking about the hitman thriller Leon and a couple of tracks you just heard great track that was Ray Charles and Georgia on my mind every time I hear that track I just float and the other track was Billy Holiday and that was summertime a nice cheerful track okay so Leon we haven't got time to really go back through the stories just about a hitman by the name of Leon he works for mafios a guy by the name of Tony in New York Tony through his clients he gives him jobs to do to hit certain gang member fraternities or whatever uh, Leon's got involved with this girl by the name of Matilda 12 year old girl played by Natalie Portman her family was wiped out by some crazy crooked cop that works for the DEA and um, they wiped out her family because her dad owed them some went sour on a drug deal Leon has seeked revenge for that killing and he's killed a few of the crooked cops Gary Oldman now has come back to Daniello and he says you know he knows that it was his guy that done it and now this is the finale it's going to be explosive hold on to your seats man so now we're back at the hotel room of Jean Reno, Nally Portman there in the hotel room. He's just rescued her from the clutches of the crooked cops because she went to bump off Stansfield. He just rescued her. She teaches him how to nap because all throughout the film we see that he sleeps on a couch sitting up and she teaches him how to sleep on a bed and they share a bed for the night and then she goes out to get some groceries. Yeah, she's all um, bubbly and she's completely unaware that when she comes back that she's being watched by Gary Oldman's character because now he knows where they live. She's about to enter the apartment and there's a SWAT team. It's, it's like a tactical police enforcement unit in the States. So they got all barraclavas on, they're all dressed in black, they're heavily armed. They take her around the corner, they interrogate her, very quickly interrogate her. Is there a code for getting in the apartment? How many people's in the apartment is he in the apartment and she gives them a code earlier in the film she was given a code by leon Mm -hmm. and it's a knock code do you have keys to the apartment is there a code a way of knocking so he knows it's you But she gives them the wrong Be one. Careful. Three SWAT officers knock on the door. The door kind of swings open. Two or three of them enter the apartment and then the door swings back closed 
Leon is above. He's got himself mounted on the ceiling. I'm um, attached to uh, some kind of device on the ceiling. And once the door shuts, he swings his body down. He closes the door and you just hear a load of rounds of gunshots. So these cops, they've still got Natalie Portman's character gagged basically around the corner. The door slowly swings back open. We see all these dead cops lying in the apartment's hallway. So they're panicked now and the SWAT team member radios to Gary Oldman's character and he says, oh, three guys are dead. And Gary Oldman says, I knew it. Cause he, t he told him to be careful before. Yeah. And Gary Oldman said, I told you. Very cool and calmly, he knows what he's dealing with. Gary Oldman says, to one of his um, other cronies he said oh get everybody down there and the guy says what do you mean everybody and Gary always says everybody <laughs> Benny bring me everyone what do you mean everyone everyone <laughs> yes literally everyone yeah unit. everyone everyone man yeah and so you see more shooting, he's still on the, the ceiling. He's hanging down now from the ceiling with his legs attached to this rig. And he's shooting more SWAT team members. He gets hit in the shoulder. The remaining SWAT team members are freaking out. The commander says, right, go and see what's happening. So the guy turns his head around the corner. And as soon as he turns his head, there's a gun held by Leon. He's held it to his head. Yeah. And the commander can't see, see that. Anything. So the commander says, what's happening? And he said, it's, it's got a guy. gun on me. The Release girl the girl. And he releases the, okay, the girl, he yeah. takes the girl and he gets that guy who's got a gun to his head. So you're coming with me. He takes him as a hostage. And he tells um, Natalie Portman's character to get the axe from off the wall. Um, she grabs it. He leaves the cop at the door and he starts to shoot the fire sprinklers. Disorientate the cops. They will turn around the corner and they start letting off a hail of bullets. They, they thought that he shot their cop. So they shot their own cop because they can't see because the water is causing a haze. And they call for backup. Yeah, they the say cap. get the cap unit down with combined arms training strategy. That means it's just like explosives. It's, it's small propelled rocket launchers. He, so he's, they're in the apartment. They're getting shot out from outside. The SWAT team members with lasers. They're just firing discriminately into the apartment. As I said earlier, when um, Leon's character go into an apartment, he looks around for the escape routes and everything. Yeah. This is why he told that the Portland's character to grab the axe. Yeah. He knows that the only feasible escape route yeah. in this situation is to dig through the walls, the ducting of the building. Yeah. So he fires like a circular round of bullets into the fan, into this ducting. After he fires it to make the initial holes, he gets the axe and he chops around the fan and he makes the old bigger and then we see all these cables and all these like waste pipe in this ducting of the building which will run straight down to the basement he wraps up the plant he throws it through that hole it drops right down and then he grabs natalie portland's character and he's putting her in the hole and she says hang on a minute this hole isn't big enough for both you can't fit in there i could just barely fit in there in the meantime we're intercutting with um, the SWAT team, they're loading up an M60 machine gun. This is a powerful mother of a gun. You yeah, know? It's, 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 um, and it also fires, propels yeah. all explosives. So they're, like, they're having an intense moment. She doesn't want to leave him. She probably will be the last time they see each other. Yeah. It's, it's a cut with this gun, this explosive gun being loaded and the tensions ramped up. Yeah, and the music again is very touching. It's, it's a very touching scene, actually. It's done very well. Well, you know, it's, it's hard to get scenes like this in movies where you've got such sustained action and mixed in with an endearing scene. He tells her that, you know, we're going to see each other again. He tries to reassure her, he wipes her face, he wipes her hair back and he's slowly lowering her into this tiny ducting so she could make her escape. He promises her that, you know, we'll be together again. And then once she's down, we see he clasps her hands for the last time and then after that vanishes out of shot and he swings himself around as if to say, come on, get me. They fire this RPG or, yeah, or something into the apartment. Everything just 
blows up. He crashes. Then the SWAT guys they throw in tear gas canisters into the apartment, so it's all smoky. No one, no one knows what's going on. They run in. And if you remember, there were a few dead cops in there before. So what Leon done? He quickly dressed into one of these cops' uniform. Of course, that's what you call a cheat in a film. Yeah. I don't think he could have done it that quickly, but no. we have to suspend belief. And I don't mind suspending belief if yeah. the film's really good. They carry him out because they think he's one of the injured um, colleagues. Yeah. Past hundreds of cops just uh, lining this yeah. corridor, very well shot. Yeah. And they think Liam's character is still up there somewhere, so they, they're going to make the assault. They want to take care of this guy that they think is one of their own. So anyway, we cut away to uh, Natalie Portman's character, and she's just made her escape. She's at the basement. She's coming out of a doorway, of a small doorway of the building, and she's running through an alley on, on the basement side, and she's made her escape. She's got no way. Yeah, and she, she gets past the police blockade. and A few floors up. Gary Oldman spots Leon's character and he sees that he's pretending to be a cop. And he realizes he, he wants to kill it, him himself because he can't do it in front of these SWAT guys. So he clears out where he expects Leon to come through after he walks away. Yeah, yeah. From the that's scene. Right. Leon, he gets up. All the other SWAT team members are patting his back and saying, well done. And, you know, just yeah. they're saying, take care of yourself because they think Leon is one of their own. Leon was about to go out through one entrance, but he decided not to because there were too many cops there. So he went back into the building and decided to go out through another entrance. And I think that was his downfall. So he's walking down now this evacuated corridor and um, done on a point of view way where um, where the camera is Leon's eyes and we see um, Stansford, Gary Oldman character, come up from behind Leon. He puts up the gun to the back of his head and um, we don't actually see him fire the shot. From the point of view of the camera, we know there's a slight echoey sound and the camera falls to the floor. Yeah. And that's Leon being shot, basically. But he isn't quite dead yet. He's yeah. laid there on the floor. But he was so close to freedom. That's what it was showing. Yeah. There's only one like police car. There's no cops around that exit. It's really bright outside, and the corridor is really dark. He's dying now. I He's see. dying. Yeah. And you see Natalie Portman running off in the distance. Yeah. You know, no idea what's just happened. Leon's still on the floor. He's in a pool of his own blood. Gary Oldman's character looked very happy and very pleased with himself. Gary Oldman's kind of got his hand down to Accusers. him and Leon takes his hand, he opens his hand and he puts a pin, a grenade pin in his hand. Leon tells him this is from Matilda. This is from Gary then opens his hand, Stansfield opens his hand, he sees this a clip, he opens his vest up and he sees like about 10, 15 Shit. grenade canisters and then BAM! That's the explosion I've been trying to tell you guys throughout the film about. Uh, Carnage, no. big explosion, yes, yeah. they're both dead. Matilda, she goes to Danny Ayo's character, Tony. Earlier, Leon, when he was alive, told Leon Danny Ayo's character to give all his money to Matilda. Happened. So he agrees to do it and he and gives her some money. But she asks him if she could work cash. for him and they both kind of start to break down. He says he, he missed him as he misses him as well. Mm. He gives her some money and then she goes to the school in New Jersey where she was supposed to be. She talks to the headmistress and the headmistress agrees to take her in and take care of her. And she plants that, Leon's plants into the ground in yeah. that school. She goes the, past a few future schoolmates. Yeah, and her schoolmates. And you can see they look like rude girls as well. They say like, who's that girl? Who's that girl? Like, you know. And the headmistress doesn't believe her story. Yeah. At first she doesn't. Yeah. When, when she was lying to her saying what happened, she didn't believe that. And the yeah. headmistress said, well, tell me what really happen and she she summonizes the events to it's her it's even more crazy yeah and she believes her and then after she plants the ag leon emma plant into the school grounds because she always told leon that 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 should be planted somewhere to make her have roots and have a life and grow and then after we get this music by sting that's yeah. the end of the movie yeah. we get this um crane shot that goes way up in the sky and then after see. we see it, it kind of finishes how it starts we get this panoramic view of manhattan 
Charlie. Yeah, what do you think of this movie? I think it's <laughs> oh, a great man, movie. That's, it's a definitely a nine out of ten movie. I, I love this movie, man. You know, True. the movie. It's got action. It's got drama. It's a good story. You shows, know, it's shows, simple. Shows the relationship between um, two people. It's a, a very, man, a man, and not quite his daughter. Yeah, it's a, it's a human story basically, and it and it's well executed. It's entertaining as well, and um, the, I didn't find a boring part in the film. And as long as the film doesn't bore me, I can live with that. And it's it's a great movie. Hats off to uh, Luke Besson, writer director. Hats off to Gene Reno, who plays Leon. Very good in that. To Gary Oldman. Um, a big applause to Natalie Portman. I must say, um, I'm out of all the child actors out there. Well, at the time, I would say she 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 definitely comes at one of the top. Hats off. Yeah. So anyway, this is uh, S L Jackson Radio Show. This is on top FM. Dot net. We're here every Tuesday after midnight GMT. Thank you for joining us and I uh, will see you next week. Thank you. And good night. I know that the spades are the swords of a soldier. I know that the clubs are weapons of war. I know that diamonds need money for this art. That's not the shit